Ladies and gentlemen, welcome, welcome, gather around to the What Did He Said podcast. It's your boy Chingo Bling. We got producer Rob, man in the ship. Hello, everybody. Of course, Javi Looney in a... Javi Looney? Hey, Looney. <laughs> we, right now, we're getting Looney out in the front porch. Only on the East Coast. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, Looney. <laughs> the, uh, Luniversal. What's up? Das. And a, pie tequila here. Yeah, that's r- Ranch Water number two, <laughs> you Big know Don. What I'm saying? Two episodes, two Ranch Waters. Baby. Shout out to Tehuacan Mineral Water for sponsoring your boy. And Pai Tequila, official yes, sponsor of the Texas Tour Stops yes, and of the podcast. Yes, a one-two punch that'll get you fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to endorse a product. Yeah, uh, for real. Uh, get fucked up responsibly. Uh, well, today, responsibly, yes, yes. Yeah, responsibly. And today, man, we got the homie Orlando Briones, filmmaker, camera yeah. connoisseur, uh, lens collector. Yeah. Dude, I love following you on Instagram, man, because it's bro. like funny uh, videos about like the gear and the techie. Yeah, all the dumb all stuff. The That's lens. what I call the, the stuff that everyone all, they look after. We just make fun of it, you know, because it's... Uh, you know how people are, man. People get bougie with some of this stuff, so we just make fun of it. That's that production yeah. that production life. Uh, Orlando, I've worked with this cat so many times. He was director of photography on our Netflix project. Um, yeah. psh, music videos, Puro Pinche Party music video, uh, Chips and Salsa, Chips and salsa music yeah. oh, video. Cool, bro. Uh, we go way back. Uh, I've yeah. known the homie for a long time. Much respect. Uh, amazing. Nah, man, he, you put us on, bro. You're the one that when <laughs> it, was, on, it was time for the Netflix, you said, hey, man, I got something for you. I'm like Gucci Mane. Yeah. I'm like the, street, <laughs> I'm like the streets A&R. That's exactly. You know, it's like when Gucci Mane discovered Migos, that's when I seen yeah. Orlando. Yeah, man. Yeah. But nah, Orlando's a beast, bro. He's just being humble. So um, you're a DP for the Netflix one? Yeah, that yeah, we did. Yeah, thanks, man. It's I can't wait. Well, beautiful. we're. Yeah. Well, oh. he, he had to end up wearing multiple hats. He he did. Yeah, a, yeah. He was helping us find low riders and stuff. He, <laughs> he's from the hood. Yeah, yeah. But uh, but yeah, man. New film, uh, Journey. Journey. It's been yeah. a journey making that. God damn. Yeah, journey. it's 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 taking a while, but yeah, it's it's finally gonna be out, man. We got some good stuff coming with it, but yeah, it's it's good and. Some of the actors in it are like blowing up right now too, so it, it just worked out. It's for all us. perfect timing. Yeah, yeah. So we have to take it little by little, but now we're here to promote Journey, get some people some eyes on it. Um, if you haven't seen it, check out the trailer. Um, but yeah, it's a long process in the meeting. I think that we've shot it, man, six seven years ago. And then even then, it was like some hiccups where you had to pick up production. Shoot, yeah, yeah. We uh, we shot um, in. Uh, Laredo, Texas. We shot here in Houston, and we also shot in undisclosed places in Mexico. They can't, you know, so, we can't say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. An ungoverned area of yeah, northern yeah. Mexico. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The best part was when we're at the location, you Wikipedia, the spot that you're at, and they're like, hey, uh, why aren't there cops here? And it's like, oh, they just all got shot up. Um, they just <laughs> shot up the police station like yeah, it took yeah. about, about two months ago. So we're like, yeah, we got the blessing to shoot there. So, oh, good. yeah, we sounds, got some dope stuff. Yeah, sounds like it was a journey to make journey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. A journey yeah. in itself. Well, bro. Yeah, I heard that for the past yeah. nine years. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. it's finally gonna be out on. Is it on Tubi? So it'll be releasing on Tubi. I can officially say mid summer, late summer. Um, we're uh, launching it on VOD on at journeythemovie.com. So. I'm, you know, I'm just asking all the homies, pay 10 bucks, go through it, pay 10 bucks, watch it. If you want to see it ad free, meaning that, you know, if you, if you do watch Tubi all right now, you, you're going to watch it with ads. So it's going to be, you know, uh, every 15 minutes or something like that, you see two ads. So go watch it 10 bucks. Um, and that comes out April 30th. So, um, you know, should be out April 30th by the time you'll see this, hopefully it'll be out. You can watch it 10 bucks. And if you want to wait midsummer, late summer, you can Check it out on Tubi and, you know, just with the ads. So the video on demand, that's going to be on the website and people can just pay PayPal or whatever. Yeah, they'll then, click on it. And then it streams it or you could download it? Uh, I think you can stream it on there. You can watch it. You can put it on your, you know, uh, TV or Android phone, uh, iPhone, whatever. You can watch it. Yeah, yeah. And you can watch it as many times as you want. You know, it's not just a rental. And don't be bootlegging, okay? Because, yeah. mm-hmm. you know, I know sometimes, you know, that can help your career. If your name is Chingo Bling, people bootleg you. <laughs> yeah. But... But this is a journey, man. Please yeah. don't bootleg. No, nah, I'm gonna give it to you for free. Just, just give me some, give me some time. You know, let it get yeah. to me, and then watch it for free all you want. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Get it. He, said, he said, then please yeah, let it play yeah, even yeah. while you sleep. Yeah, exactly. Turn it on that's, repeat. That's, yeah, 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 watch it a couple. Change times. VPN. Yeah. Play it again. You if know, you just, can. Oh, is that what they gotta do? Hire yeah. a bot farm. Uh, I'm not sure. Uh, I have no idea. 
And allegedly, it's all alleged. As he sips coffee, <laughs> no idea. Yeah, right now, get my numbers up on, on my stuff. I've been going to Best Buy and typing my special. In. <laughs> <laughs> Refresh. Yeah. All the computers. Best all Buy. computers. Yeah, walk, that's it. Some some little twelve year old walking by trying to buy a video game. What's this? As, <laughs> hey, that could be a funny promo, man. Yeah. Like that whole scenario of like, if the kids like, what's this? And then one of your raunchiest <laughs> jokes starts playing. <laughs> I think that's how it is for a lot of comedians, right? They watch like the worst joke ever at ten years old and just change their their mind. Yeah, so yeah, yeah that's, that's what happened to me, with Eddie Murphy. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I took my son to go see Bill Burr. Oh, you know, you know he, he grew up listening to the podcast, so he's a fan. He's as big of a fan. That's awesome as, as I am. So he was like stoked. That, uh, that he that's got badass. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he it was supposed to be me and my wife, but she couldn't go. So I was like, take All the right, kid. Take the kid. He was like. I was, I was like, hey, man, in the morning we're going to San Antonio. He goes, for what? I go, we're, we're going to go to the ATT Center to go see Bill Burr. He's like, for real? Like, he thought I was fucking with and him. And your kid is like, older than eight, right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> okay, yeah. Right. yeah. But, but the thing is, we've been listening to Bill Burr since he was yeah. about eight. Okay. okay. He's, he, he was 15 at the, at the time. He oh, just okay, turned yeah. 16. No, that's not so, bad yeah. at all. Yeah. And uh, allegedly, uh, in that same venue, uh, Hobby has been gone off edibles. Uh, of course, not at the same time with his not son. Just, gotcha. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, on two different occasions. Two different occasions. Same venue, same uh, concert. Same show. They, 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 they may or may not have my picture up in the security office at the AT&T Center. <laughs> I, was, I was definitely suspicious. I, I, the edible got me to, to where I, I was. I, I kept having to leave the concert area to, like, calm myself down. And I realized that I, I kind of called attention to myself. <laughs> since I had gotten up from my seat, like, four times in a 20-minute period. So... So then, when I tried to walk to the little area where you could unlock your phone, I I, I heard the like look at like yeah he's walking over here towards me right now, and that just set my paranoia Oof. Like, like off. So so yeah, uh, if you, if you go into a concert like that, I, um, microdose. Is, you know what I'm saying it's my suggestion. Enjoy responsibly. You know, Jingle enjoy spaces re- like. responsibly. Dude, uh, I'm thinking like dude, we, you know we got a show coming up, House of Blues, June 16th. Javi will be in the building. And uh, I went yesterday to film some promos, and up in the mezzanine seats, there's so... It kind of reminded me of like some kind of teatro you would see like in Mexico City, mm-hmm. like the old concrete or whatever. <laughs> they say you'd probably have some fucking ramen with birria in it or something. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, a soda in a bag? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a but the mezzanine seats, man, if you on some edibles or something, and it's yeah. that. It was like, you're looking at the top of the comedian. I think head. that was the problem. I was up there, and, and, and I was up there, and that, that wasn't a good combination. So, so yeah, if, if you got balcony seats, if you got nosebleeds, uh, you know, maybe just hit a joint or something. Don't, uh, don't take an edible. So, so uh, earlier, uh, Shift gears real quick, Orlando. You said that um, you're like right now. I'm I'm just in this. So like you're just in promo mode, or like mm-hmm. what else you got juggling? Well, you know we're yeah we're juggling um, Journey. We also have another feature that's called uh, Fight Boy. Well, Journey, real quick, just so people know, it's a little bit about like um, it's just a, a, a quick story of this uh, guy that grows up in the United States but was born in Mexico, brought over as a kid. Um, I, the easiest way to say is like uh, Borinista LA, the dramatic version of it. And so he gets born, he gets you know brought over mm-hmm. when he's young, gets caught after he finds, uh, well after he knocks up his girlfriend, he goes trying to find a job, gets arrested, gets sent back, and then the whole time he's you know we kind of put him through a, what we call a forced gump of situations of you know so many people have had that happen to them trying to get back and. So we just kind of give them all these different situations where, mm-hmm. um, you know, a lot of them have to do with like our families and cousins and homies that we know that went through that. So we do this to this guy so people can just see like what's happening. So ultimate goal is for him to get back um, before the birth of his kid. You know, so pretty simple story. Just wanted to, you know, put that out there. Well, I, now that yeah. you're saying all this stuff, like I saw it like a year ago. That's right. Yeah. And all the way to the end, bro, I was like, yo. Yeah. It's crazy. Like on yeah. the edge of my seat of like, yeah. yo, because the time clocks are ticking. It's like, dog, yeah. you knocked up your, gir- your girl. Your ass has got deported. Yeah. You're trying to get back in time. You're trying to get back, yeah. So the, them, them time clocks, it's like, yeah. bro, yeah. are you even going to see the birth? You know what I mean? And that's a, that's a cool thing about, about the film just, just in general. I think it also like take takes real good care of that story. Like I said, it's a story from my dad. Like it's just the one that I want I wanted him to watch and be like, ah, it's that way. You know, like yeah. that that's all you want to hear from him, just that, yeah. you know. 
uh, and and that was it you know so i i got a good reaction from from my father and my family and all them and um overall yeah pretty dope uh, the next one that we have which is the one that we're going to go on promo probably in about two months is called fight boy and that's a comedy it's like uh that one is friday meets uh scott pilgrim so it's a guy that uh fights his five former high school bullies and he's going and fighting each one after another so that one's a a comedy and uh it's a it's pretty uh pretty crazy it's all ba- it's based in houston you don't know it's houston but but yeah we had some fun with that one and uh, that one's gonna be a pretty fun to to promote as well badass man yeah man so whenever we can shoot and then we got we got some more we got to do so we're uh we're put we're on this thing where we're looking to make uh content that we can put in to bring that you know uh, what we call that mail money the the residual checks, you know, because if not, I'm going to keep working, doing the same thing I do until, you know, I'm as old as my dad. So kind of want to uh, get some yeah. stuff coming through. That production life, man, is interesting. Um, like I started off as a production assistant as mm-hmm. I was trying to get Chingo Bling going yeah. off the ground. Uh, you, you know David Gona? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so yeah. he was like my manager when I first started. I remember. Yeah. I sat with him at Tellwink, and he was telling me. I got this Chingo that, Bling that, guy. Yeah, man, that Chingo Bling guy, dude. I talked to him. You know, I started him. I'm like, yeah, right, shut up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know about know. started him. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was instrumental. Instru- <laughs> I don't know if he said that, but yeah. you know, it's one of those things where you yeah, know, we started like, like, together. You know Chingo Bling, right? I'm like, yeah, no, yeah, yeah. And I was like, okay, cool, yeah. <laughs> yeah, um, we, yeah, we, it was years, bro. Yeah. Just like, um, but yeah, but it, but before the the Chingo Blink stuff started to pick me up, he did get me hired on productions, yeah. and uh, so I got like I'm very grateful for that as well. How I got to learn firsthand because that's such a cool, um, that's such a blessing to like be able to experience like being on a set, like real real sets. Mm-hmm. Like they they shoot in a Scarface video, uh, my block. Oh right right right. Uh, Lil Flip, I think this is the way we ball. Like big directors. There are some iconic ones for sure. Yeah. yeah um, and just as a production assistant, where I like, psh, dog, I was making mistakes <laughs> and getting lost, getting the talent and the the star vehicle lost and broken down. Um, the <laughs> the Devin the Dude video. It's like oh, the yeah. song's about the car. So Devin is stranded with some production assistant who calls himself Chingo Bling. <laughs> <laughs> the car broke down, so now the video is gonna cost more because Rap a Lot had to now rent a flatbed. <laughs> Rap a Lot had to, they like who the hell bring me this Chingo Bling guy who ruined my music video? But now they had to now mount the car with Devin in it on a flatbed. So and now they gotta rent up. that and mount the cameras on that. And the whole time they just. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the one over there by Craft Service. But that's if you want to get started, production assistant. Yeah, don't break down people's cars. And <laughs> yeah, crap. But yeah. You're, you're there with and the, got them lost yeah, with yeah. a turkey wrap. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a you know, it, especially here in Houston, since it, there's not a not a massive film industry. So you know, if you jump in on PA, you might, you know, back when we had a bunch of uh, now we have Astro stars. You know, you'll be on like every one of those HEB sets and the. And the sets with them, you'll see those famous people. Back then, it used to be like J.J. Watt, uh, you know, James Harden. Like you, there was a shoot for them every other week, you know. So it was very easy. I remember people calling me from L.A. and be like, "Hey, man, I got to shoot this exclusive video with, uh, you know, this this uh, uh, basketball player. I can't really say who it is. Like James Harden, right?" I've, we've everyone has worked with James Harden at this point. He brings so much work to Houston. So you're like, I've shared I'm chicken like, wings yeah, at Onyx we, yeah, at yeah. four in the morning. Oh, so with James, so I'm like, do it, like, yeah, man, I got to do another. Yeah, James Harden. <laughs> if that's your like thing to like get me on your set at a lower rate, it's not gonna work because we've already worked with James Harden. You know what I'm saying? But it was that's how that's how it was for a long time. That those guys brought so much uh, money into the city just with ads and adidas and you know all those different companies and then they're like so, there's a certain white football player who's really tall yeah, you're yeah, like yeah jj Watt. yeah jj Watt. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 i, I, know. I, you, I saw him yeah. last tuesday but yeah yeah. Cool. yeah 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 we're at onyx sharing chicken wings <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> beat king was there imagine jj Watt sharing chicken wings at onyx with you <laughs> that's a that's Bro. an animation right there it's a cartoon <laughs> yeah so like but here here you can definitely get on all kinds of productions and stuff like that but mainly commercial because that's mm-hmm. houston if it's not like back then, you know, um, rap a lot and a bunch of other the the big, um, all the big guys. You know, you would have the coolest videos, um, but you don't really see that as much anymore. And that just has to do with how technology has changed and how people can get the smaller cameras. And you know, you can create content with almost Cell anything. Phones. Cell phones, man. 
uh, yeah, like you can do all kinds of. I remember Paul Wall so, did a video with the cell phone. So for just for, for people like yeah. that are watch, listening, watching that don't aren't like yeah, yeah. movie person. What what would a, a production assistant like? What would you say a job description for that? <laughs> so is, is it's, there one? it's literally Ready? like you're there to like help with anything and everything. Right, um, gopher. The, so it's yeah, the first gopher. job you get yeah. on a on a Correct. on a set like yeah that. yeah. So like like White if you're in the construction, it would be like coming on like as, as a helper. That's like right, a gopher. Like I go, did that too. All my jobs is gopher. Gopher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty much what it is. So, yeah. but what's crazy is that some of those people here in town. Uh, like because it is more commercial, you're gonna get paid like 200, 250 bu- bucks now. Like for the day, yeah, for not with not knowing anything, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I know. Yeah, see, I'm not. I was like, ah. yeah, I know. Javi flips the table. What the fuck? <laughs> I freaking <laughs> drove from Corpus. I would go be a PA. <laughs> thanks a lot, Orlando. And you got a car? You got a car? Yeah, thanks uh, a lot. Get an extra 25 thanks a lot. bucks uh, for gas. Yeah, hey, I hope y'all appreciated Javi Luna being a recurrent guest. I'll see y'all later, man. <laughs> go out on a high note, dude. Recurrent guest. You know what I mean, Javi? Uh, yeah. Uh, speaking of amazing productions, though, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's a really good stand-up special that's on YouTube right now. You can see t- clips on TikTok yeah. and everywhere else. Uh, shout out that production company that shot uh, Tuxedo Goose Films out of Corpus. Right? Yeah, they did yeah. a great job. He's yeah. special, man. Not for he everybody. He does the taco, the taco. Yeah, thing. taco gear. Yeah. The taco gear. Yeah, yeah, I know those guys yeah, too. Taco chair. Yeah, yeah. That's my boy Gerald. Man. Yeah, Gerald Flores he did a great job on, on you know. Yeah, we both learned a lot. We're hoping to work together on the next one again. Javi was headliner, comedian, and production assistant. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you paid yourself two fifty, bro. I actually made my wife work. My wife is a PA on that one. She 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 was doing everything. The edible hit too hard on that one too. She had to even come back to the green room and calm me down for a second. Sometimes the pin be hitting too hard. I had to talk him off a ledge in El Paso. <laughs> oh. But then it happened to me, damn near, it happens. in uh it in Alamo, Texas. When my wife gave me a bunch of news uh-huh. right before I had to go up. Uh-huh. But anyway. Uh, <laughs> See, that's why I drink because instead. It's part of the drink. That's why Rob is that's drunk. Why I drink. That's why I drink all the time. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to say that's why you're drug free. No, that's why I drink instead. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> Sounds like a, a plea for help. Pie tequila. It's <laughs> yeah. a great plug for pie tequila, yeah, everybody. Uh, speaking of uh, delicious well, and, alcohol. And, and, and when I do drink, because yeah. life is too much for me. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great endorsement right there. <laughs> It's not 8.30 in the morning right now. <laughs> no, it's not. This is afternoon. It was when and we I'm started. Gonna take, it's gonna, not right I'm going to take a nap in the guest room before I leave like I did last time. <laughs> don't worry about me, guys. I don't like drive straight home. Man. I'm all right. But yeah, man. Um, hey, so what's the runtime I was going to ask on Journey? Journey's 90 minutes, right? We made it to be like, you know, a watchable film. It's oh. it's literally one of those like, it's not going to be two, two hours and 10 minutes, you know, which oh, is the okay. normal. So, yeah. That's normal. Kind of sounding like a saga for me, like a real. Yeah, yeah. Story. It, it, it's kind of it's a quick run, man. If you get to if you get past like the 20, 30 minute mark, it's just like a little uh-huh. roller coaster. So if you can get to that part, then you'll you'll pretty much be there to the end. So it's a, it's a good it's a good um, fun run, but yeah, ninety minutes. Cool. So these these different uh, I guess trials that he's going through, like what kind of characters is he? So yeah, I mean, you can imagine, you know, if you've if you've ever dealt with. Uh, being in Mexico, like we're from uh-huh. Reynosa, like that's where my family's from. Uh-huh. So, uh, that's dealing where my with, wife's from, big dog. Yeah. So, you know, R- Reynosa, which we love and it was great going to. We don't go, we haven't gone back in mm-hmm. about 10 years. Reynosa, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's tricky. So, being in those situations, and the other thing is that we made this character be kind of fish out of the water. He's like an American, he's a pocho, he's someone that. Doesn't really speak the, the language well, understands right. it a little bit. So, you know how it is, man. Right. There's fast talkers in, in Mexico and in those areas. They're looking for these kinds of people. So, mm-hmm. yeah, he gets in situations that normally, if you're like us and you kind of grow up in like H- the different hustlers, streets and swindlers, yeah, yeah, and you kind of, you know, I went, I, I grew up in Acres Home. <laughs> so, you know, first friend I had, like, first friend we invited over to our house, stole my dad's cell phone. We're like, yeah, never happened again. You know what I'm <laughs> so you learned, like, right away, you're like, yeah, you're not like, everyone, welcome to the faux faux. Yeah, not everyone's my friend, right? Is so, there, is there, like, a villain in um, the movie, if you had to say? Like, yeah. yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's kind of hard for us to say that there's a villain. Um, mm-hmm. One thing that we did with the film, just so that we don't kind of, like, say, hey, these are the bad people here, mm-hmm. we kind of left it more ominous in terms okay. of, like, 
just the the bad people that are out there, and that's just because you know we're from Reynosa, that so seems we don't. To be more common now, right? Like you make yeah. up for, in in film, like like yeah. we're gonna tell the story, and and you make up your mind who's yeah a good yeah. guy. Well, for us, it's just guy. too close to home. You know yeah. what I'm saying? We can't if you start if you try to give uh, a specific a uh, group of people that that label like you know we're we're from Reynosa, and I like right? that because I actually I actually came up with the idea for Cobra Kai when, <laughs> when I was nine years old. Oh, you came up with the idea? Yeah, because I used to watch Karate Kid back in the 80s, and I was like, I like Johnny more. Like, Johnny's a way cool. Like, <laughs> Daniel was kind of a little bitch, like, in the movie. <laughs> like, if I'm honest, like, I was watching, I was like... Especially like, in the series. Like, he's just <laughs> whining all the time. Like, he's mad because his mom moved him from New Jersey. Like, shitty-ass New Jersey to beautiful, <laughs> sunny California. So, to, to, you know, to make it come full just, circle for you, yeah. one of the guys that we had with us at, at Journey, um, he was our intern, our PA. Right, this guy started with us in doing Journey in Laredo. Mm-hmm. Uh, he actually uh, Norwegian didn't have papers. He went with us with no papers, filmed in uh, in Laredo with us. You know, crossing the uh-huh. the thing and everything. Now he's the production coordinator for Cobra Kai. Oh, hey, wow! Foreigners taking your job. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a Karate Kid fan. I was so happy when that show came yeah. out because I used before it came out yeah, before yeah. that YouTube video. I used to have a bit that I would do about that because I, I always felt. Secretly, that way, like, like the dude's yeah, just a, he's just a whiny, entitled little character. Like, first of all, that wasn't your radio. Well, Daniel. you like what yeah. the fuck? God, like, you got a lot of resentment against his character. Well, it's business. like you're you're mad. You had to paint a fence and wax a car. Bro. Yeah, bro. Like he's just mad. Like you took. Yeah, you came and took someone else's girl. The dude's gonna be mad. Johnny was fixing to turn his life around, bro. He turned down the beer. Remember his friend gave him the beer because now nah, I'm an ex degenerate. Like, and you just came in because you were mad because now you can't live in New Jersey. Who the fuck wants to live in New Jersey? Stop being a little bit. I just want to go home. I just want to go home. Fuck you, Daniel. So. <laughs> That's all. Awesome. Yeah, especially in the new series, he was like definitely. It was mm-hmm. more in your face at that point. Yeah. They made it obvious. So, would you say is your hero? Is he? A, would he be a flaw? Considered a flaw? Well, I hero? would say I would say that he's someone that is that is definitely just. Is not aware. He's a, mm-hmm. you know, a, a chief flower. You know, someone that's just kind of pampered here. Like, grew up with his mom. You know, one of those people where, like, you know, there's some. The the, the cool thing about our film is that it nuances Mexicans mm-hmm. in terms of, you know, there's not there's not a monolith, right? Mm-hmm. A lot of people have different varying views. So if you watch it, you see people from all different kinds of of stages. And like the mom, she's like a very like you know she cusses a lot. Like she's like very like what's wrong with you blah blah. blah. But then. She also doesn't want him learning English, you know, so she's like, I mean, learning Spanish, mm-hmm. you know, so she talks to him in English more than she talks to him in Spanish, you know, she'll yell in Spanish, but mm-hmm. she'll talk to him in English. And so he doesn't get that whole, like, I'm going to learn Spanish because it's my culture. So going to Mexico, he's like, damn, like, you know, you can kind of blame his mom a bit for not teaching him that yeah. or thinking that, you know, let's not talk about your situation with the papers, you know, let's just kind of make sure like you're never going to get caught. And it happens, and like, damn, what do I do? She kind of set him up for it, too. So yeah. you can kind of go through and blame it. So that's the cool thing, that there's nuances of all the different Hispanics and, and, and Latinos and Mexicans that are that are in that film. And that's what a lot of people that have seen it, they're like, you're not just showing this like from one, one angle. You're like literally building characters all the way throughout, and we're seeing the difference in how people are. And that's that's exactly where we're, you know, we wanted to do, so... So in the video, Puro Pinche Party, what is it like <laughs> working on with a low-budget artist <clears throat> who man. didn't really have a budget? No, man. Dude, yeah. If y'all haven't seen those, man, those are the, always the fun ones to put up, man. It's always... It's always... That one and Chips and Salsa, man. Chips and Salsa, both of them were, were so dope. Yeah. But the, so, the, <laughs> the Puro Party one was dope because, man, uh, bringing the... the what you call the Quebra, the, the, the dancers from Chicago and stuff... They're they're like head over heels, man. Like like, hey, let's like they were they were like hoo jingle bling. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's come down. They were all excited and then some acrobatics. Yeah, they did. acrobatic. I was uh, a yeah, I was the little I was chick. They were them. just flipping her. <laughs> they're just twirling them. But no, dude, it was dope. It was it was fun and uh, all the people that came out too. Yeah, um, cool. And honestly, the the best thing is that you actually had a budget. Like you know, you had some you had some money to throw it in. We're just filling. Any barely. holes, yeah, barely, but sh- I mean, we made it, <laughs> it work. worked. Now nah, it worked for it worked for us, and the, w- the way we always knew the 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 dope thing about working with you is that you kind of have the same mentality and like, hey man, you're talented, you do you, you know what I'm saying? Just just take care of it. Hey, 
okay, I have these little issues. Let's fix these things. But you know, it's very like you do. You know, you do what you know what you're doing. You know, just just the, take care of it. The yeah. funny thing is, that's the best for us too. Yeah. Because like I remember us showing up and um, everything was organized and every, everybody's working on what they need to work on so that it looks cool. And then my wife, and then it was just like, yeah, man, just hang here in this trailer or whatever, and we'll just come get you when uh, yeah. we're setting up the shot or whatever. Mm-hmm. My wife's like. Oh, this is nice. Like, if this is what shooting a music video is, then we can do it like this all the time. Yeah. So. Well, and the second one, the Chips and Salsa one, was also dope. And that, you guys were a little more, uh, I mean, because we were kind of enclosed in that space. Yeah. But, and we did it, that one we did real fast. Um, you know, the the Puro Party, I think we had a little more time. But, um, a little more elaborate. Yeah. yeah and uh, a lot, yeah, a lot more people and stuff. But it was still, that one was dope also to see how uh, Marisol and, you know, was able to help with like the wardrobe and the, you know, um, thinking of some of the the art design and stuff like that, all that stuff like helps so much. So well, that's why she's my wife, is bro? Oh yeah, that, that makes sense. You know she, yeah. uh, but yeah. she's got her hands full with you know with the kids and stuff to where like she a whole mogul. Yeah, so like I went down to the valley, bro. Did some shows. Like I went edged up. I left my little my little chain in the hotel. I just felt like you know what I mean. Like I didn't have yeah. none of my my accruements. Oh man, I was, just felt bare. And I was like, yeah, my soul was here, you know. Yeah, yeah things ran smoother. <laughs> She'd have been the one iron in my shirt, but uh, or telling you you need to iron your shirt. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I, I showed you some some of the scripts uh, Javi had uh, wrote a while back, web series. But yeah, we'll we'll chop it up, man, to see what we can get going at some point. Um, the cool thing is that it's webisodes, so yeah, yeah. so it's almost like we can collab with like different production teams for like just for like one episode yeah. even. It's like, oh, we directed episode three or whatever, mm-hmm. just so it could be. Yeah, we're around, man. We got the equipment and we got the time. We're we're you know we're we're excited for it. So as soon as you're ready, yeah, let's let's try to make some stuff happen. But yeah, man. Might need some rewrites. It's been, we had that web series on, on pause for for a minute. So. Yeah, it, feel, so it just feels like on it. But yeah, yeah, everything's slowly like I feel like we're getting some other departments and aspects streamlined to where we can now have a little bit more energy and time yeah. to start to like execute. Because like my buddy from Odessa, he'll he'll pull up like the masa and the power. Masa and the power oh, yeah, thing. Yeah. We did with some yeah. homies out in out of San Jose. Well, they're Texans, but they lived out there. And he'd sent me clips and hey man, this would probably be a good minute to put online. And I'm going back and watching this stuff. I was like, bro, we were just there was one mm-hmm. where uh, Sammy, aka Juan Yerbas, where he was supposed to be like a he's like a gardener, but he also had this crazy background with like agriculture to where this was like this magical corn strain that we came up with. And it's like prueba lo carnal. And he and he's just like, no, no, no way or something. He's like, uh, uh, he just starts. Like, he's like, he's like, no way, me vení. And I was like, eso pasa, carnal, eso pasa. And then I like hand him a cigarette. <laughs> it's so stupid. It's so fucking dumb. I have this big fake mustache. Pla- it, we came out like nine, ten years ago. It's still great. It holds up. I was living in L.A. at the time. This is crazy how this happened. Philly Brown had went to Sundance. It was like one of the hottest films out. Uh, Gina Rodriguez is proven to be like this yeah. debut yeah. star. Yeah, 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 all yeah. of a sudden, she's auditioning for these sick, you know, Jane the Virgin and all that. So we're in Sundance. They sell the movie to distribution. It's going to theaters. So I'm like, I got to be close to the action. So I like get up, go post up in L.A. for like for about a year. But I'm thinking like, all right, Hollywood, I guess uh, I guess they're ready for me yeah. now. Let me go ahead and have my black and white 8 by 10s and figure out who finna, who finna be the agent and all this. And it's just like, nah, dog, it, it don't work like that. Yeah. Like, we didn't send for you. <laughs> so then that's when uh, Jesus from Desmadre.com, he came down and um, he's like, hey, bro, let's write some shit around you that we can produce and we all win. You know what I mean? It's like we make something cool. Because, dude... He works for like uh, Apple, oh, so yeah. he's got like the the gig. But he's like, bro, I want to fucking shoot and make some art and film and do some funny shit. And uh, so that was like his side that, thing. That's what you need, man. And that's a, the cool thing about Journey. We man, we had people that looked at like, like for example, the Netflix project that we did. There's no way that I could have gotten Journey uh, completely funded if I didn't have. A backing of like showing those kinds of projects or being able to be done mm-hmm. even though i believe we shot journey a portion of it before um you know, before uh, netflix i remember i think the time is a uh, little but it was one of those things where 
people will once they see the work that you do they're willing to put down that money mm-hmm. i mean the, the amount that we raised for journey is pretty ridiculous thinking about it but it's one of those things where like it would have never happened if someone didn't say like hey i see that talent here's money let's see what you can do so uh the fight fight boy which was even you know the second one we're doing that was someone just was like here's the money you know here's the money like let, let's just do something and i was just like okay you know, where before we're like, man, I hope somebody can give me some money. I need to find some more. And like you're standing outside yeah. with a camera smoking a cigarette. Someone's was it. like, hey, here's some money. Like, <laughs> I was like, I got this special elote right here, bro. And people didn't want it. It so was just like. Th- this film, the, the one, the journey, uh, uh, has it done any festivals or anything? So 